So 2011 was an interesting year for lawns and turf grass generally. We've seen a lot of uh, lawns die, and, this, and now come the spring, we're seeing a lot of lawns becoming weedy and the lawns not recovering at all. So we've been looking at alternatives for turf species, and we've been looking at natives and those ones which are commercially available. And we came up with a mix of buffalo grass, um, blue grama, and curly mesquite, all three grasses native to Texas, which grow really well together. And we found out they form a beautiful, dense, soft turf, which is resistant to weeds and requires low mowing and low irrigation. The trick we're putting in a lawn, any lawn, a native lawn or non-native lawn, is to do the soil preparation correctly. If you don't do the soil preparation correctly, you're just wasting money and you won't get the results you want. This is the hard part. Buying seed is easy, putting seed out is easy, but doing the soil prep is the tough part, and that's the part we're going to talk about here. First of all, you certainly want to remove any existing grass that's there. We say this because for things like Bermuda grass, um, they are quite invasive, and they'll come back and they'll interfere with this native mix. If you've got a lawn, especially St. Augustine, which is clearly completely dead, and you can tell that because once things get warm, it doesn't green up again, you don't have to remove there. But for a lot of the other grasses that we have in the lawns in Texas, you may want to remove that whole cell. There's a several ways to do that. You can spray it with herbicide. You can have it removed. They can just strip it off with a sod cutter. You can solarize it using plastic. Um, and a lot of these things can be done by contractors, but you do have to remove that. A soil test is important because you want to make sure that the texture and the nutrient levels in the soil are what you need for this grass. These grasses don't need high nutrients, they don't need a lot, and a soil test is a good way to find out what those are. Perhaps the most important thing about soil preparation is tilling deep. These grasses, as all grasses do, keep most of their um, growth below ground, not above ground. So you really want to make sure you have some good soil there. If you haven't got soil, if you're on very shallow soil, you're going to have to import it for this to work. Equally, if you're on soil, which is quite often very compacted, you're going to have to loosen that up. And what we're saying is you need a good six to eight inches of good quality soil. That's going to require either tilling it by hand, bringing in or renting a tiller and doing it mechanically, or alternatively, of course, bringing in um, a contractor to do that for you. And the specifications on that are on our website. In many soils, particularly urban soils, the organic matter in the soil is very low. So you want to replace that organic matter. And what you need for that is good quality compost. Good quality compost is relatively hard to find. One good rule of thumb for selecting compost, it should smell like a forest soil, like a mushroomy smell. If it smells more like a barnyard, it's probably still not really fully mature. So you really want to get a good quality compost which has that, that forest smell. You need about an inch to a half inch over your whole site and then till that in to your, to your soil so you've got a well that top two to three inches has that organic matter incorporated in it. The compost alone probably won't have enough nutrients for your lawn. So your, if you have your soil test back by now, you'll be able to see by the recommendations on the return of soil test if you need extra nitrogen or phosphorus. Those are usually the ones that lawns don't have enough of. Once you've done your soil prep, the, uh, you can put your seed out. You can put this out by a number of methods by hand, but the important thing is to make sure that you've got good soil to seed contact. The way to do this is use your rake, rake that seed in to about a quarter of an inch, and then secondly to compact that slightly, either by foot or using a rented or borrow a roller. In terms of times of year for installing this lawn, you really want to put the seed down in the growing season. Now the growing season is from March through November. But the best times we, we, we suggest are really in spring. We do recommend putting in an ir irrigation system, that they're relatively cheap, and that the, some of these smart irrigation systems allow you to program them with respect to rainfall and soil moisture conditions. In terms of how much water, for the first uh, 10 days, we recommend keeping that top half to one inch moist, so that when those seeds germinate, that root has instant access to moisture. After that, you can pull back on the amount of water you're, you're putting on down to a couple of times a week after a couple of weeks. And then thereafter, after, say, six weeks to two months, you can then go back to once or twice a month, depending on the condition. Depending on the time of year, it may take several weeks to several months for these grasses to establish. 
You must bear in mind these are native species, and they're much slower growing than a lot of our non-natives that should normally use. So it's good to be patient. If it's a warm summer and they get adequate rain, you can expect them to establish in between four to eight weeks. Yes. One last thing to remember is if you want to make sure you don't get those weeds which plague lawns, especially those spring weeds, the important thing to do is let your grass be long while it's dormant over winter. And that means that last mow of the season should be quite high, between four to six inches. To find out more about how to prepare your lawn and where to buy seed, please visit our website at www.wildflower.org habitat.